Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day, whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, whenever you're watching it. Happy New Year. Happy 2024. Um, this is actually being recorded on the 31st, but I'm going to let it go about 5 o'clock on the 1st, so this is kind of my last little, uh, and I'll do some more, but this is what I was going to call my number one made in the USA knife that's in my collection as of now. Um, and I wanted to kind of focus on knives that were bought and brought into the collection this year. So earlier in the year, I picked up this Hinderer 3-inch XM18, fantastic knife, 20 CV, awesome action. I've currently got it on bearings, but it's tri-way. Great, great knives. This is a huge win for 2023. Um, another knife that I thought it was just going to be scales that came into my collection, but turned out being a knife um, was this TRM Nerd. I've got now three Nerds, as I fail it. This one was going to be a set of scales that I was going to pick up at the Nashville Custom Knife Show. But right before I went, in about nine or ten days, I found this, but based on an Instagram post, this little Maximet, where all my other TRMs are 20 CV, this Maximet full tie nerd. So I could easily take these titanium scales off and put some of my other nerd scales on, or take these titanium scales and put them on another nerd. However, this was a configuration I really wanted. MagnaCut just made it a bonus. This is one of the best small pocket knives I think you can get for the money. And yes, it's not inexpensive at all. Um, I'm not talking about the titanium, but if you went with a uh, Micarta or a G10, it's just a very well done titanium framed 20 CV, now MagnaCut little small knife. Another huge, huge win for the USA made knives that came in my collection in 2023. This is one I did not expect to get. This is the um, Microtech Stitch. It's the USA made Stitch. When I ordered it, I think I've told this story way too many times because I love this knife, but when I ordered it, I ordered the G10 because that's what was pictured. When it came in, it was... It felt cold. I didn't know at first if it was just really well done G10. I went back to my closet, dug out my box, and sure enough, it is an aluminum um, stitch. So I felt like that was a little extra bonus. I love DLT trading. They probably didn't do that on purpose, but by the time I'd figured it out, I'd used the knife so much, I'd carried it around. Um, I didn't, you know, I just kind of went with it call it what you will but it is an aluminum stitch it has got fantastic ergos fantastic action and the sharpest factory not only grind but the sharpest factory edge i've had from any knife in my collection don't know how they do it i'm sure there's some very simple way that they do it but the stitch was also in my tactical knife Guys, from an EDC knife to anything that you could imagine needing a knife for, from the smallest tasks, like picking a splinter out of your hand, to breaking down a bunch of cardboard, to, you know, having to go ham on somebody who's trying to take your Slurpee. This is a great knife. Very reasonably priced. I paid, I think, $300 for it because it was G10. I think if you... Get the aluminum. It might be a little bit like 350, maybe closer to four. I don't exactly remember because I've never really looked at those. But I love the ram lock. I love the action. I think because my buddy A to Z has the G10, and the aluminum just seems to have smoother tolerances between, as I fail it, between the um, the scales and the blade, which makes sense. And this, is, again, is an M390 um, MK, which is the Microtech variant of, um, of M390. So they just did a little tweak with Bowler, is my understanding. 
Don't know if it's any better. I just know it's a little different. But what a wicked knife. Boker blades. Borka blades, excuse me. And um, Microtech for the stitch. Two knives I picked up that are favorites. Not the favorites, but favorites in my collection. And the one that probably gets carried the most because I'm a smaller guy. And I don't need a four inch knife in my pocket all the time. Is the Spartan Harsey. The Spartan Harsey... The only Spartans I had in my collection up until about five, six months ago was the little field grade Talus, which is the same actual size as this little uh, Harsey, um, 3.25, and an Aster. Both of which, since I've picked up my Plague Doctor set, um, I have gifted on as Friday Night Flicks giveaway. But this little knife, guys, is absolutely fantastic it does have a thicker grind but it is a tactical knife one has to remember very slicey cuts just fine this is one i thought about if i was not collecting it as a set satu dave could put a hollow grind on this or that would just make it sick but what it is is it's a tactical knife it's a poker It'll cut through duct tape. It'll cut through any materials that you need it to. It's a coarser grind. It might not be the thinnest, um, but it's definitely up to the task if I could hold the paper and get it to cut. Did y'all hear that break? But anyway, that is the Spartan Harsey three and a quarter inch Plague Doctor made in the USA on washers. I also have a 4-inch, which was one of my top knives, not my number one, but the Plague Doctor motif, just because when this knife was released was about the same time that I got really passionate about the hobby and the people around the hobby. So this is definitely one of my top knives. We're getting down to number one, guys. And this, unfortunately, is not it because I haven't had enough time to live with it, but it's definitely in the top three of my USA-made knives. This is my first Strider knife, and my understanding is, because I'm not very educated on Striders yet, but that this is kind of a hybrid, um, which with is a crosshatch G10 on the show side, and then you've got the back spacer that's integrated kind of into a unibody, that Leong Mai type of construction. And then you've got this kind of flame anno tie um, back. And this is the SNG, which is the medium size, I guess you'd say. Um, it is in PD01, I want to say. Um, a really good steel, one that I wasn't that familiar with. Um, talked to Dark Gravity about it the other day and learned a little bit more. This, if I'm not mistaken, is a dagger grind. Um, I love it, guys. I'm uh, absolutely um, thankful for my brother Scotch and Things, Steve, who was on the lookout because he knew that I bought my second ProTech. I bought the ProTech SNG. I bought the bought the uh, PT207. And he knew I wanted a Strider, and I'd sent him some that I'd seen on NAFSIL and other places. And he's in a lot of the different groups, and he really watches that market. He's probably one of the, has one of the coolest Strider collections of anybody I know. I'm sure there are probably others who do, but he's very, very well versed in what the market's doing. So on a limb, he saw a knife that he thought would make me a good entry-level Strider, and instead of asking me, knowing I'm a wishy-washy guy, he picked it up, did an unboxing, talked in the unboxing about he bought it with me in mind, absolutely telling me, not only in the text that he sent me before I saw the video, but in the video that, John, don't feel like you by any means need to grab this knife. I just know we've been talking about one. This one was almost brand new. The guy was very fair about what he wanted for it, and I'll just pass that along to you, but if not... No worries. I'll either keep it or pass it along to somebody else. And I said, dude, absolutely. No, no questions asked. I am in. And um, that's, that's what happened. And this is my first Strider. And I'll just tell you, I'm absolutely stoked to have it. I love the knife. I think it's fantastic. Um, it just is, it's just an absolute 
absolute winner, guys. Um, not quite number one, but it's not far off. So this is my Strider Crosshatch SNG. Love it. Came into the collection this year. One of my absolute favorite USA made knives. Which brings us to almost number one. This knife had been a knife I'd been chasing for quite a while. Um, tried to pick one up at Blade Show in Atlanta. Um, had missed a Tanto by about a, hmm, four or five hours. Um, there were some autos there. I wasn't really wanting the auto. I wanted the McNeese Mac 2, three and a half inch. And that's what this is. These were made available on DLT's site. This is the atomic finish with the shockwave uh, scale pattern. I just absolutely love it. It is a slicing machine. It's magna cut. It's made right here in my home state of Alabama. And guys, the action is to die for. I did put skiffs in it. I didn't need to, but I got about two, maybe three more balls um, in stability. But this is my Mac 2. Three and a half inch by Tim McNeese in South Alabama, and I'm a huge fan. Which brings us to my number one 2023 and my number one USA made knife that spends the most time in my pocket. And this is a knife that I would not have even considered or been interested in had it not been for my little buddy Ethan Ruins, who I had the pleasure of meeting at Blade Show 2023, who had his own Lamia or Lamia and was sharing it with me, telling me how cool it was. At the time, it was a washer only knife. This is, if I'm not mistaken, the Gen 3. It was part of the Friday the 13th 2023 drop. It's got the uh, black distressed show side, the nice mill titanium um, lock side. You've got CW. This is a crew wear variation. Um, you've got SPK, it's an Alex Steingrabber. I saw it on NAF sale. It had been picked up for about a week and the gentleman wanted to move it on. Um, I did not know because I'd only played with Ian's for, you know, five minutes here, 10 minutes there. We'd be sitting outside in the hall and I'd play with it a little bit. Um, but you never really feel the same way when you're work at least I don't when I'm playing with somebody else's knife because I never want to damage it or never want to do anything stupid when this came in I was blown away by the action but that's when I learned about one of the upgrades being the bearings um, I blown away by the thinness of the knife blown away by the tolerances blown away by one of the things that this might be polarizing but I love it I love a good CNC grind. I know that's kind of anti a lot of things, but I look at it as a precise way to dial in what you or Alex as the maker is trying to convey in their grind. And I can tell you that this guy is an EDC absolute winner. The sharpening choil is done fantastically well. The plunge grind is done fantastically well. The hardware is minimalistic, just gorgeous. Um, guys, this is, for me, uh, number one. Um, and I couldn't remember when I brought in the Zeba S5 that I picked up from Brother Dark Gravity, which is definitely my most sentimental USA-made knife and probably one of my favorites but i think that came in late last year so guys for me i've got the spk lamia and i know i was just going to show you my favorite so we'll do everything around my number one number one usa made knife i was going to do a video i think i told you if you watched my other video on imported knives that i might do a video taking, you know, these, breaking them down, and then saying what is my favorite knife of the year that came into my collection. If you did not watch my imported video, I gave that away yesterday. That knife and the knife that won my knife of the year for this year, taking all things into consideration, is the Kunwu Padre. The Kunwu Padre, fantastic. Would I 
rather have my Lamia or the Padre, that has nothing to do with my assessment of which was the best knife that, that came in. So I don't want anybody to think I probably should have done a best of, but when I was doing that video, I really think the Kunwu Padre for most people is the best knife of 2023. Um, personally, me, I like nicer knives, different knives, and there's nothing unnice about the Padre. The Padre is a wonderful knife. Um, I've just kind of gotten into a different jam of the knives that I'm into. Um, and the Padre is one that regardless of how that jam changes, that knife is in my pocket at least once a week, and I'm cutting with it every day a little bit of something. But guys, happy, happy new year. Hope we have a great 2024. I hope it's together. I love each and every one of you. Please look out for that guy or gal to your left. Please look out for that guy or gal to your right. Please look out for each other. Please go forward with love in your heart. And please choose debate, not hate. I love you all. Peace.